So at the beginning of last year I said I was going to take part in the 50 book and 100 movie challenge. So seeing as it is January 2014 I thought it's the perfect time to review over to see how well I did in my challenges last year. Settle it. I did very badly. So we'll start off with the 50 book challenge. In the end it turned out I read 27 books. Two books over halfway. That's just not good enough. I guess I did more academic reading than I thought I did. Which is a good thing. It meant I was studying but I ultimately fail my challenge. Since it was a 50 book challenge, even though I didn't quite reach it, I thought that I would do my top five books of 2013. Before I begin, I want to say that these books aren't books that were published in 2013, but these are books that I just happened to read in 2013. Also, I want to give an honourable mention to Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. It was a fantastic book, and if I could, I would make it joint fifth place with the book I'm about to mention. However, I think the book that I'm about to mention kind of impacted me more emotionally and so I had to give it the place but if I could I would make Eleanor and Park a joint fifth with it. So in fifth place we have John Green's The Fault in Our Stars. I'm sure most people have read this by now because it is becoming very hyped and very popular as it should with the movie coming out soon. Obviously people are going to start paying more attention to it. This is a very tragic romantic story following these two teenagers Hazel and Augustus. Hazel is a terminally ill cancer patient and Augustus is a former cancer patient who is now in remission. The two of them met in a support group that is held by the church for cancer patients. This book basically follows their very tragic love story um, in all its ups and downs and it is so sad and I cried and the ending is not what you think and I won't spoil but if you haven't read it, definitely go pick it up, read it, and read it before the movie comes out because... In fourth place, I give it to The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling. Now, I'm not gonna lie, whenever I found out that J.K. Rowling had brought out another book but under a pseudonym, I was very, very, very nervous. I'm somebody that didn't like the casual vacancy. But this book was actually fantastic and it's going to be a series. This is a detective crime novel and it is about a detective called Camorn Strike. Camorn Strike is a war veteran and he was injured in action and basically part of this book is him building his life back together. And then the other part of this book is that he is getting paid by the brother of a model who reportedly committed suicide. The brother doesn't believe that that is the reason and so he pays Camorn Strike to find out the deep dark truth. And this book basically follows to see was there something more sinister that happened. Admittedly it's a very slow paced book however the characters make this book. The characters are brilliant and interaction between characters is brilliant. I'm excited for the fact that this is going to be a series and I can't wait to read the next books in the series. And definitely check it out if you're kind of crime fiction detective novels. It's a good one to go for. And then in third place we have The Ocean at the End of the Lame by Neil Gaiman and this book is just beautiful, fantastic, so dreamlike. I don't know if I can properly explain it. It's, it's so weird but fantastic and beautifully written. Basically there is a young boy and his life begins to change when his family start to come into financial difficulties and they have to let out the room in the attic which used to be this young boy's room and one day they let it out to this man and that man while being at their house um, commits suicide. Since that point bad things start to happen and things start to go wrong. I couldn't ever begin to describe this book. It's just, it's so, it's weird. It's dreamlike and it has kind of creatures, almost alien-like creatures in it, but it is fantastic. And it's Neil Gaiman, so obviously it's fantastic. In second place, I'm giving it to a series, and that series is Divergent. And I am well aware that this is not the first book, Divergent. This is Allegiant. However, I'm giving the second place to the full series as a whole. I would say out of all the books in the series, Divergent is my favourite. Um, and Allegiant is probably my least favourite. Um, however, I do not dislike this book as much as other people do. That controversial ending I thought was brave and I'm kind of glad that they went there. However, this book still destroys my soul. However, 
The series as a whole is fantastic, it is brilliant. It is a dystopian novel series, so obviously it's a fractured society. At a certain age, these young adults, teenagers, decide whether to remain with their family or to break off into different fractions that are probably more suited to their personality. There's a corrupt society, an evil government, big brother syndrome and typical dystopia but fantastic. If you have not read the Divergent series, give it a try especially before the film comes out because it's probably so far one of my favourite dystopians that I've read. So yeah, go check it out. And then in first place, and this might seem a weird book to have in first place, but I had to because this book really emotionally impacted me. And that book is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This book was actually the second book that I read in 2013 and it was just brilliant. It was just fantastic. It's written kind of in letter style, which is weird because it's usually not a style of writing I'm particularly fond of, but I just, it was brilliant. The protagonist in this book, Charlie, has such a tragic and traumatizing past and he's socially awkward and he doesn't have very many friends but then all of a sudden he meets this group of people and all of a sudden he has this fantastic social life. There's something about the infiniteness in this book like that quote and in that moment I swear we were infinite. This book makes you feel infinite. While you're reading it you feel infinite but then also afterwards you kind of have I want to have that infinite moment. When can I have that feeling of infinite? So, mm, I just love this book. And it's a sh very short book, so you have no excuse to not read this book. So, go check it out. So now that we have the books covered, we will go on to the 100 movie challenge. This is a very complicated. <laughs> I know exactly how many films I've seen in the cinema. I've seen 29 films in the cinema. I know that because I collect cinema stub. However, watching films at home is a bit of a unknown ground. It's a bit blurry because I don't quite have the same record. I should have made detailed notes, but roughly I've worked it out about 40 to 50-ish movies at home. So all together I watch somewhere between 70 and 80-ish films. So ultimately I still failed the 100 movie challenge, however not by as much as I failed the book challenge, I like to think. Because it was a 100 movie challenge I decided that I would whittle down that list to my top 10 favourite movies of 2013. So in at number 10 we have The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, which is the first movie in The Hobbit series. I'm very well aware this came out in 2012, however I only saw it in the beginning of 2013. I thought it was brilliant. Obviously it is the movie adaption of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and I know the second film is out and all but I haven't seen it yet. I'm hoping to see it soon and I can't wait because it was brilliant. And it is the journey of the lifetime of Bilbo Baggins if you needed any further explanation. In at number 9 we have Saving Mr Banks and I'm so glad that this is in my list. This is the story of P.L. Travers, the author of the Mary Poppins novels and the pursuit of Walt Disney in trying to get the rights to Mary Poppins to make it into a film. But to her Mary Poppins is something so special, so precious and intimate to her that she doesn't really want Walt Disney messing with something that is that important to her. It is such a touching and moving story. It is beautiful, it is sad and definitely if you can still see it while it's in the cinemas I highly recommend that you do. In at 8th place we have The Great Gatsby and purely I think this is in here because it is beautiful and it has really good music and it is by Baz Luhrmann so obviously it had to have all those things. And at 7th place we have Frozen. It is beautiful, fantastic and it has a great soundtrack. Adina Mansell is in it who is from Wicked and oh, it's beautiful. At 6th place we have Thor 2 and I'm a biased fangirl. I go to see Thor for Loki, I'm not gonna lie. And it, it, it annoys people, I know, but blame Tom Hiddleston, he's too damn cute. Fifth place, we have Wreck-It Ralph. And Wreck-It Ralph is amazing, such a feel-good film. It's 90s throwback to awesome arcade games and ah, oh, it's just, it's fantastic. And I've probably seen it three times last year, 
not going to lie. In at fourth place we have Catching Fire, which is obviously the second film in the Hunger Games trilogy. Catching Fire was so much better than the first film. I kind of disliked the first film because it was just, there was so much wrong with it. And this book, okay, it wasn't perfect, but for some reason I could get over the imperfections more than I could in the first movie. As a whole though, I think that this is going to be a movie series that I'm going to like so much better than the books. It's going to be that weird, not often thing that happens. In at third place, we have the movie adaption of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Once you get past Emma Watson's rather bad American accent, it's fantastic. It's just like the book. It's quite true to the book. It's, it's brilliant. It's just, <sighs> infinite people. We just want to feel infinite. In at second place we have Iron Man 3, the last movie in the Iron Man series. Oh, it was brilliant. It's actually a fantastic Christmas time movie because it's set within that kind of Christmas period. A brilliant, brilliant film and it was a good kind of end to Iron Man. I just don't want to admit that there is going to be no more Iron Man films. Iron Man is probably my favourite Avenger. We have Avengers 2. We have a little longer before we have to say goodbye. And in at first place we have Les Miserables! Some people are probably going to be so annoyed by this, but that movie emotionally impacted me for like a fortnight afterwards. Sounds weird, but so true. I am a musical girl and I love the stage version of Les Miserables. And I know some people that like the stage version of Les Miserables didn't like the film, but I got past that because it's beautiful, the music's fantastic, obviously. It's got Hugh Jackman, and the fact that they were singing live when it was recorded is brilliant. Okay, we can kind of get past Russell Crowe singing. <laughs> and local interest in it of Fraffy. I cried during it. I was emotionally scarred for two weeks after and I don't see how a film could emotionally impact me that much and not be in my first place. I love it so much that I may also have the DVD and the CD which for some reason I haven't taken out of their wrapping ship but doesn't mean that I haven't seen this more than once. <laughs> So that is it for my top 10 movies of 2013 and I hope there isn't too much controversy in there. Please note that there are some things that didn't quite make the list that were fabulous like The Wolverine, The Heat was actually a great comedy, The Conjuring was actually a very good kind of um, scary film. And also take it into consideration that basically if I haven't mentioned an animated film I still loved it, like particularly Despicable Me too. It was fabulous. To be honest, if I could give it a tie with Frozen, I probably would. I just didn't want to put too much animated films into there, so that's why I didn't mention it, but actually I feel like I should. Can Despicable Me too be in the list too? Now I'm having controversy of the heart. Most animated films this year were fantastic. Everything was fantastic. I've seen very few bad movies this year. And that is it for a review of how I did in my challenges this year. Um, yeah, I failed both of them. This year I am again taking part in the 50 book challenge and the 100 movie challenge because I'm a sucker for punishment and I don't like admitting defeat. So leave down in the comments below what your top book was of this year and what your favourite film was. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you particularly liked it, you could also subscribe and join the family. We'll see you in my next video, guys. I feel like I'm cheating on my fandoms. It's like, we've got Marvel up top, DC on the bottom. We'll just ignore the fact that I danced in my pajama bottoms. We'll ignore the fact that it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm still wearing pajama bottoms.